Hi everyone, NZ Tech Freak here again with another video for AndroidNZ.net. This one of course is yet again featuring something to do with Samsung's recently released Galaxy Note. And what we're going to do today is bring you a different video tutorial showing you how to route the Galaxy Note. And the reason why we're bringing you another video on the same topic is the initial method we showed you which was flashing Netchip's kernel in Odin increased the binary flash counter on the Galaxy Note. And and there was no way to remove that and the significance of that was if you for, for any reason you needed to return your Galaxy Note for warranty purposes uh, the technicians would be able to see that you'd flashed a non-stock kernel to the phone. The problem of course with that is that the technicians could see that you'd flashed this non-stock kernel and then may decline to honour your warranty so the potential loss of warranty was a bigger risk with that old routing method. Now this new one is based on the Zerg Rush exploit and in particular I've, I'm using Chainfire's own take on that here um, and rest assured it's still pretty straightforward just as the Odin one was so let's get into it and the first thing we're going to need to do is to download the file that you can see highlighted within the browser window on the left hand side of the screen there, that's the Chainfire root installer zip. Now after that you're going to need one further file to download and that's going to be the Chainfire root kernel that corresponds to the kernel on your phone. In order to get the right one what you need to do is to go into the phone into settings, scroll down to the bottom and select about phone and what you'll be greeted with is a screen that looks nearly identical to the one I've taken a screenshot of um, showing on the right hand side of the video there and the little arrow is pointing to the bit you need to know um, so on mine the kernel version is KJ1 and I need to download the corresponding version of the Chainfire root kernel so very important you get the right one. Now a little bit further up Chainfire's thread you'll actually see there um, he's got some instructions himself, some written ones on how to make sure you get the right file. Once you've got those two files that you need, so that's the Chainfire root installer and also the correct kernel, we're then going to follow these instructions here on how to use the Zerg Rush exploit. So first of all we're going to extract the Chainfire uh, root installer zip. And so we're doing that there. And I'm going to pop that onto the desktop also. And the next thing that we're going to need to do is to get our Chainfire root kernel and extract that. And you actually need to extract it twice. The first time we'll take it from a zip to a tar file and the second time we'll convert the tar file into a Z image. And following the instructions uh, on Chainfire's thread, what you need to do with that Z image is then to drop it into a folder within the Chainfire root installer folder that we've extracted previously from that zip that we downloaded. And for the next few moments on screen what you're going to see is me following those instructions I've just said. While that stuff's happening on screen I'll just hasten to add that following this video at a short interval there's going to be a written guide at the blog with all of the stuff in it including links that will take you to the various pieces of Chainfire's guide there that you need to follow in order to route the phone. So just to let you know there will be a supplement to this at the blog. Once you've done all that you're very nearly ready to start the actual route process. Just need to take a few moments at this stage to make sure that all of the USB drivers for your Galaxy Note are installed to the computer easiest way to do that is to connect your Galaxy Note to the computer and I'd suggest it's worthwhile connecting it with USB debugging uh, both enabled and then disconnecting and reconnecting with USB debugging enabled uh, because what I've noticed is that it installs a different set of drivers depending on which one of those two connections you use. If you're still having no luck you might need to install Samsung Kai's onto your computer but we'd hope not. After that we need to start the notrootedyet.bat file which is within the Chainfire root installer package and you're going to be greeted then with a screen that looks like this. It's got a checklist of things that you need to do, it includes stuff like what I've mentioned in terms of having all of the USB drivers installed to your computer. When you've done all of those things what you need to do is plug the USB connection into your phone and then plug the other end into your computer and then press any key to continue the process and what you'll see when you do that um, is a kind of 
cute and mildly entertaining story telling you about the Zerglings efforts to break the security on your phone and install root and I think that's just there to keep you a bit entertained uh, while the root process happens to distract you from the inevitable thoughts that you've turned your phone into a thousand dollar paperweight um, so that's just running in the background there and at the end of that it will then prompt you again to hit any key to install the actual chain fire root kernel itself. Now that's just going to run in the background and I'm just going to talk over that a little bit. Uh, what I wanted to say was just in terms of things you must must do uh, once you have root access on your phone to make sure that nothing goes awry later on when you're flashing various ROMs and bits and pieces. Now the first thing you need to do is to go into Clockwork Mode Recovery uh, and make an Android backup of your phone. Very, very important. That's kind of like a complete system restore point in Windows uh, so that everything does go wrong. Providing you're able to enter recovery, you can just simply restore yourself to that point in time. And the second very important thing to do is to get some sort of uh, file manager that has root privileges onto the phone and back up a folder called EFS in the previously secure system area uh, of the Galaxy Note. Now EFS folder contains some vital information to the running of the phone, things like the IMEI number and so forth, and sometimes when you flash a ROM you might lose that folder and if you don't have that backed up you may well run into very very serious strife. So two things you must must do, there's a full guide for those things over at the blog. So now the process is nearly complete and what you're going to find at the end of all of this is that you have a rooted Galaxy Note. So this is NZ Tech Freak once again signing off for AndroidNZ.net.